Hi, this is Deborah at the Labyrinth, and today we're going to go over altars. And we're going to focus on a Wiccan altar, and also a generic altar, and also an altar for people that are of the Christian faith, and that lean towards that religion. So I want to explain first about altars, what altars are used for. They're used to, they're a place for you to focus, to pray, to meditate, and they put you in the mindset, if you're going to do any kind of magic or manifestation, they're putting you in that mindset of in between the physical world and the spiritual world. They're putting you in between, in that in-between space. So you're focused on the altar. You're not focused on your life or anything that's going on outside of your life. You're focusing on the inner part of yourself to connect to spirit. Now, an altar can be round or square. It just depends on your personal preference or even rectangle for that matter. When you're, when you're setting your altar up, it can be in any direction that you choose. Now, I choose to put my altar in the north because I'm an idiot when it comes to finding direction when I'm doing rituals at other people's homes or in other spaces. So I bring a compass and that will give me what's called north according to the direction on a compass. If you're going to do it by sight, you're going to look where the sun rises up, that'll be your east, and then directly in front of you will be north, but it's really not true north. Only true north will be found with a compass, so keep that in mind. There's two ways to find the north direction. Now, I place mine in the north, but you can place it in the east, you can place it in the south, the west, or the center. You can move it according to the seasons or to the holiday that you want to do. I like to just keep mine in the north so it's it's not confusing, you know, it's the same thing over and over. Now, according to the season or the holiday or the magical work, you want to have an altar cloth. You don't want to have your tools placed on bare wood or uh, a table or anything like that. Your altar should be something that is in a fixed state. You're going to always use that. Now, some people have a hard time setting up an altar because Maybe they're not uh, in a family or in a surrounding of where environment of where people are friendly to altars. And you'll find that no matter what religion you are. Some people like to have an altar in the closet. I've had people that put a dresser in the closet and then their tools and candles and such go in a drawer and then the closet is shut, no one knows. And then when they get ready, they open up the closet door, put their tools and their candles on the altar, make sure you don't light the clothes on fire. And they pray right there and do their work right there. No one knows. There's also a way that you can use an altar, which I call a traveling altar. And that can be in a suitcase, a hat box, and that can be placed under your bed or in a closet. When you get ready to use it, you just take it out, put it on a surface. You can even use the top of the hat box or the suitcase as the altar itself. So I've seen that done, especially when you're traveling to festivals or you're traveling to someone else's home to do a ritual. People just shove everything in a suitcase and bring the suitcase. Uh, some people like to use tea tables or TV trays. It's tiny, but it's doable. The other thing is that you, the cloth that you use should correspond to whatever god or goddess that you're looking at or that you're worshiping or to the holiday. Now, out in the front here in the store, I have things relating to Samhain, which is coming up, which is honoring the deceased. And the colors, as we know, for Halloween are orange, black, which is, I have the candles here for that. So the altar cloth is to match the season or the work that you're doing or corresponding to the entities that you are connecting to. Because remember, an altar is a place for you to focus. So we're going to go over a Wiccan altar today and talk about the tools that you use and what they're for and the directions and how they correspond. Now this is a very simple altar, a Wiccan altar, that these are the minimal amount of tools and objects that you should have on it. Now my altar at home and the altar here is chock full of little statues and little gnomes and at home I even have pictures of deceased relatives and animals that I loved and different entities that I correspond with but here this is very simple I don't have a lot of that so we're going to start in the east and here we have our athame or our tommy which is a knife and this is placed on the right side of the altar and this is used to direct energy 
from spirit to the physical world and from the physical world back to the spirit world. It's a conductor. It should be double bladed. Yes. Traditionally, it should have a black handle, but that's mutable. You can also inscribe on a handle if it's wood, any kind of decoration, initials, or correspondences to any kind of entities, the god and the goddess. I don't recommend you using a stone knife. I've seen that a lot or a folding buck knife, or a knife that you're gonna to use to cut anything with. This knife is not used to cut anything on the physical plane. It's a conductor of energy, so treat it with respect. It should also be consecrated, cleaned, and charged before you use it. And we can go over cleaning, consecrating, and charging in another video. If you are gonna set up an altar, and you are gonna have these tools, uh, you can also look up how to do that. There's many different ways to do it. Uh, and by the way, I am not an expert on this. This is just what I do and what I've learned. So this goes in the east. It represents the phallic, which is the male, okay, the active energy. And that's why it is placed on the right. Now, also on the right, we have an incense burner. And this is for your cone or your stick incense that you're going to use that corresponds to the work or to the holiday of what you're doing. Correspondences are very important. And then in the south here, this represents fire. And also, I just want to know, east represents new beginnings. It represents uh, the male, like I said, the male. It's east, it's air, it's beginnings. It's everything and anything, all possibilities. And that's also what the incense represents. Now, the, the incense burner is not necessarily a working tool. The athame is, okay? Then we have in the south, a representation of fire. Now I like to use a little candle with a cauldron. I like that. You can also use just a regular candle. That's okay. We're going to get into that in a minute. But this represents fire and that's the south. And that is your will and your passion, transformation, cleansing. Those are all the correspondences that relate to the south and to fire. Then we have the west, which is water. And this here is, some people consider this a working tool, depending upon what you do with it. This is the chalice, and the chalice is representation of the goddess because it's a vessel, it's a container. And if you have this on your altar, you don't have to keep it filled with water or wine. You leave it empty until you're getting ready to use it. And then you would put wine or water in it. And that would have to be consecrated in the ritual, uh, which we can go over a Wiccan ritual one day. Then in the north, you have what is for earth. Now I have a stone uh, bowl here with a bunch of rocks in it and little things that my crows left me. But that's manifestation and that's nature and that's grounding. So we have all of the elements, east for air, south for fire, west for water, and north for earth. Now we have in the middle a representation of the god and the goddess. And this is very simple. Like I said, I have a clear crystal to represent the god energy, which is white. And then I have a dark tourmaline crystal to represent the goddess, which is the feminine and the receptive energy. In front here, we have the candles. In the back, we have the candles here. These are relating to the holiday season. The candles in the front are relating to the god and the goddess. So the goddess is always going to be on the left side and the goddess going to be on the right side because that's active and receptive. So we have a white candle here for the god energy and we have a dark candle here for the goddess energy. You also want to have a lighter, don't forget it. You know, don't leave your space and go, oh, I forgot the lighter. Make sure you have a lighter on your altar. You also need a candle snuffer. I do not recommend you blowing out candles or snuffing them with your finger. There's a reason for that. Number one, you could start a fire. You could blow that and a little cinder goes over and poof, there you go. It's going to light up some dust bunnies and then you got a fire. Also, you don't want to use your energy to put out spirit energy because these represent spiritual energies. So snuffing is a great way to do it. You just go like that and it puts the candle out. Now, if you're using your candles for say manifestation or magic or meditation, you can reuse them only if it's for meditation. I do not recommend you reusing your candles if it's for magic, manifestation, or any kind of uh, devotion to the God and the goddess. Uh, you could reuse a candle for that, but I wouldn't recommend it. If it's a holiday, 
you're just going to use it for that holiday. You're not going to reuse them. You're also going to want to have a little sage pot, and this is to clean the space before you get started, before your prayer, meditation, or magic that you're going to do. So you want to have your sage pot. The other thing that we have here, this is an offering bowl, and the offering bowl is very important. A lot of times when you get in front of your altar and you're doing your prayers and you're doing your meditation, which you should be doing on a daily basis, you might want to give an offering to the God or the goddess of your choice so that you can have those energies come back to you. Because remember this, your focus, attention, and time is giving energy to these entities so that when you ask for something back, you're going to get it. It's like money in the bank. So you're making an offering. It doesn't mean that they're going to actually eat it or they're going to actually feel it. It's the intent. So the intent of the energy of you making an offering is very, very important. Now, the normal offerings that you could use are you could look up the God and the goddess of your choice and see what corresponds with what they like. Gods and goddesses, there are many different offerings for many different gods and goddesses. You have to look it up. But a generic offering would be milk, honey, wine, bread. And you would put that here as an offering in your bowl before you do your prayer or your meditation, both. I pray first, then meditate. And then 24 hours later, you're going to take it out and you're going to throw it out, out in the earth so the earth can have that. And you're going to clean it and you're going to do it again. You don't have to do it every day. If you're looking for something really, really important that you really need to put a lot of energy into those entities, you would do an offering. You also might want to do an offering in order to have those entities meld with you more and also get messages from. It's kind of like picking up the phone, calling your mother versus going to her house and having a cup of tea. That's the difference with non-offering and offering. So the Wiccan altar is very simple. You can make it very complicated if you want by using statues. You can also have other items on here. Your, I also have here a little statue of Diana and Diana is my patron goddess. Not necessarily the goddess that I uh, use energies with or work with in all of my rituals, but she is the go-to goddess that I have. So I have a little representation of her at all times on my altar. The things not to put on your altar, I want to go over this because some people are very confused about that. You don't want to set your cup of tea or your coffee on your altar, no. You don't want to set your lighter and your cigarettes and whatever you got going on on your altar, no. The altar is considered sacred, just like anything else that you're using. Make sure you don't put your everyday items on it. Don't put a book on it. If you have your book of shadows, say, and you're doing a ritual from a book of shadows, Use a stand and put your book on the stand. Uh, it, it'll get really crowded if you put it on your altar. Make sure you don't overcrowd. The other thing that happened to me, I want to go over this with you guys, is wax. Wax is really a pain. These little candles, they really don't drip that much if they're not under air conditioning or a vent. But you could put a little square of aluminum foil underneath it to catch the drips if it's outside or if you've got some wind going on in the house with fans and whatnot. But wax seems to be a big problem. Now, when you get wax on your altar cloth, a real helpful hint here, you take it and you put it in the freezer and let it freeze. And then you can pick the wax off and then you can put it in a washing machine. But really, you're going to go through a lot of altar cloths, I hate to tell you. I've even tried using plastic on top of it. It just kind of ruined the effect. I didn't like that at all. So you can do that. There's also little things that you can use on your candle holders. They're little round things and they catch the wax. They're very helpful, but I've still had drips from those too. It cuts it down. So if you use ones in the Vada holders, eh, you don't have any drips. So you can use those too instead of this type of a holder. That will help with your wax. So now when you have your altar, say, and you have it all set up, and you have a representation of the god and the goddess on it. And you have your four tools here relating to the elements. And you have your sage. And you got your snuffer and your lighter. What you're going to do is you're going to stand in front of your altar and you're going to close your eyes. You're going to ground, which is putting your roots all the way into the center of the earth. You're going to connect to the spiritual energies or to the astral plane. And you're going to put a bubble of light around yourself. Now you're going to do that when you meditate or 
You can physically walk the room in a circle starting from the east all the way around and imagine a bubble coming up above and below. This way you are now in sacred space. And the reason you do this is because you don't want any interference emotionally from anyone else or anyone else's thought forms. And you don't want your own going out either. You want to have a safe, sacred space in order for you to do your work because you are going to be on the astral plane. You're in an altered state and you don't want to be open like that to other people's influences, whether they mean it or not. You're also going to say at that time in your head of when you want this to come down. If you've done it in your head of just putting a bubble up, say when you want it to come down. If you walked it from the east all the way around, all you have to do is walk in the opposite direction to open it up. And you have to use your visual in your head to put yourself in this bubble of white light. So then after you do that, now you're going to get into your prayers or you can get into a meditation. You could just sit quietly. I've had many a ritual of where I've gone outside, made an altar and just sat there and enjoyed the glow of the moon. Just enjoyed the peace and the quiet. You really don't have to do any work at all. You could do a meditation, you could do magic, you could do a spell, you could just sit and enjoy the energies, you can ask for messages from spirit. It's a place for you to just have the world go away and be at peace. So this is a Wiccan altar and it is the most, the bare minimum that you want to use. And when you set up your altar and you create your bubble, before you create your bubble is when you're going to use the sage. So you're going to light the sage and go in a clockwise direction all the way around. And you're going to imagine little black flakes coming together, shove it in a ball into the earth, be recycled. And now you're going to set up your bubble, which is spiritual energy. And now your place is clean, your space is clean. And now you're able to set that sacred space up without having any negative energy in it. You also might want to clean yourself to get rid of negative energy from your body, your mind, and your spirit before you go into the sacred space. So what I do is I sage the area first, I sage myself, then I create my bubble. And then I say when the bubble's gonna come down, if I'm just sitting, if I'm walking, I could just undo it by walking in the opposite direction. Then you're going to do what's called your work, which is a meditation, a prayer, an offering, or just sitting there and enjoying the energies, thinking about the God or the goddess energy and what you're looking for. And that's that. So this is a Wiccan altar because it relates to the four elements, air, fire, water, earth. And we also have a fifth element, which is spirit. And it relates to the God and the goddess energies. So if you have any questions about a Wiccan altar, you can always give me a call or type a comment. I would be more than happy to answer any of your questions. But this is the bare minimum that you should have. We're also going to go over another altar that is set up for our Christian Catholic friends. And because an altar is not just Wiccan, people have a misconception about altars. In a lot of your Christian religions, they don't use an altar. In Roman Catholic, they do. But in some Christian religions, they don't. Well, that's their prerogative, but I'm going to show you how to set up an altar for Christian and Catholic in a minute. But if you have any questions again about the Wiccan altar, please feel free to call me. And this is the bare minimum. I know there's a lot more that you could put on here. The bare minimum that you would need, you need the correspondences to the four elements plus to spirit, which is five. You need the knife, you need the candle, you need the cup and you need earth. And that's it. Very simple. I hope that you've learned something from this video and please make a comment and ask a ton of questions because I really enjoy that. If you want to get in touch with me, I am open from Monday through Saturday. 10 a.m. until 7 p.m., 239-939-2769. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to get into the components of a Catholic or a Christian altar. Now, what you could do is you could also use the elemental energies, which I would recommend, which is the knife in the east, the cauldron in the south or the candle, the cup of the chalice in the west, and then also something to represent the north, which is earth. Because the elemental energies are there no matter what religion you are, you're still going to be manipulating those energies. But in this case, I want to show you the bare bones that I would use if I didn't use those elemental energies for a Christian or a Catholic altar. Now here we have our incense here on the right. That's corresponding to the element of air. 
because you know the wisps of incense go up into spirit right that's a that's a really old thing you can look that up they used to call it burnt offerings when they would burn an animal years ago in the christian religion before it was christian the jews did that too so this is a representation of that the incense burner and the incense and then we have our candle in the south here to represent fire or will okay and that's that's the, the red candle it's red red corresponds with that you could have the chalice in the west to represent the divine the holy mother and you could have the earth which is stones or crystals or anything like that to represent the earth now in this case i have it very simple bare bones i have candle representing the active energy of the Christ consciousness and then I have the receptive energies which is the black candle of the Holy Mother Mary. I also have here a, a flower of life crystal wand and this you would use in lieu of your knife or your athame. It's a conductor just like that tool is and if you're going to use a wand on your Wiccan altar you would place it in the south. It represents the south. Here we've got a little candle snuffer to put out our candle and we have our offering bowl. So this can be very simple. You don't have to use the elemental energies. You could just put a couple of statues or a representation of Mary and Jesus. And what I've done in the past when I've done rituals, I'm Wiccan. And when I've done a Wiccan ritual at my home years ago, I had pagans, Wiccans, Jewish people, Baptists and agnostics, believe it or not. And to be more common uh, ground with people because we had mostly Christians and a lot of people today were Christian before they were Wiccan. So the Christian is a very magical religion if you want to really delve into it. A lot of the correspondences carried over into the Wiccan religion. A lot of things they do. It's very, if you want to go to a high mass, I would recommend that. The magic is phenomenal. But anyway, uh, what I did is I did a wicked ritual using the correspondences of air, fire, water, and earth. But for spirit, I invoked Jesus and Mary. And the prayers that we used were the Lord's Prayer and the Hail Mary. And it was really funny because, and ironic, because everybody, I handed out a sheet for everyone to read the words. Everyone knew them because We've all grown up with those religions. The energy raise was phenomenal because people carry that in their DNA. They are used to it from their family and society. A very big connection, even though they weren't practicing that religion at the time. It was phenomenal. So it doesn't really matter what religion you are. It's what you connect to. And religion is an expression of your spirituality because the source of creation just is. The religion is the expression of it. So if you want to set something up and you're Catholic or Christian, you can use Jesus, you can use Mary, and you can use an altar. It's very simple. You can use a candle. Uh, just make sure you have a representation of the feminine and the masculine energies. You can even set it up where you have the Trinity. You know, the Father, the Mother, and the Spirit, which, you know, uh, what are they? The God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. You could do God, Jesus, and the Holy Mother. There's many ways that you could do a trinity with the Catholic faith or the Christian faith. It's the same thing because it's the source of creation that is different aspects. Just like in Wicca, it is the source of creation with different gods and goddesses, which is different aspects. So with the Christian, we have Jesus here and we have Mary. It's all you need. And a representation of a candle in each front of one of them. And you can even put a rosary there or a cross, which I have done on altars for other people. You could put stones there that relate to the Holy Mother. You could put prayer cards, scapulas, anything that relates to the Roman Catholic or Christian faith, you could put on your altar. You could put a cloth that relates to Jesus or Mary. You could put a gold cloth, a silver cloth, anything that you feel is going to correspond with those two entities. So I hope that I've helped people that are not Wiccan. If you're not Christian and you're not Catholic and you're not Wiccan, they're going to think, I don't know what to do with an altar. What do I do? 
Well, the first thing that you need to do is decide what you believe in. Not necessarily religion, but what do you believe in outside of yourself that's a bigger source. Start there. Then you will have correspondences to what you believe in to put on your altar. Sometimes if you don't have a knife and you don't have the money to buy all these things, well, guess what? When I worked for a title company one time, I had a little windowsill. I always had altars everywhere I went. I took a feather, that's air. I took a little tiny candle, that's fire. I took a little seashell, that's west for water. I took a stone, that's north for earth. I even had a desk drawer that I would open it up and I would have those things in it. That's it. Very simple, you can make it very simple or as complicated as you want. You could have it portable, you can have it where it's put away someplace, or you can have it where it's open all the time. Now, you can have many altars. You can have an ancestor altar. You can have an altar to your god or goddess of choice. You can have a generic altar. You can have an outside altar. I have all these altars. You can make a ton of them. Or you can also make a traveling one. So it's very easy to do an altar from simple, everyday items to store-bought, complicated items. It's up to you how to make your altar. But just remember, an altar is a place for you to focus, to pray, to do your manifestation and magic, which a lot of people say miracles are magic, which they are. Or you can do it to just have a peaceful sitting of where you're calling that energy of that entity outside yourself to where you feel peace, you get strength, and you're able to carry on with life. Altars are very important. If you have any questions, it doesn't matter what religion you are, please give me a call and I will gladly help you if you need help or you have any questions about altars because I think they're very important. Your altar should be in the same spot all the time if it's set up. If you're traveling, that's a different story. But if it's in your home, you can have, you can have it on your nightstand. You can have one part of your dresser that's an altar. You can have a tea tray, whatever you want to use. You can use it as an altar, but make sure it's stationary. Give me a call if you need any ideas or if you need any help setting up your altar. I'll be more than happy to help you no matter what religion you are. We're open from Monday through Saturday, 10 to 7. You can give me a call, 239-939-2769. Please give a like and comment. I will also answer any questions you have in the comments. And please have a nice day. And don't get too upset about not setting up. Just make it simple. Simple's always best. God bless and thank you very much.